Welcome to Magic the Gathering Arena. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and this video is a guide to Magic Arena's tutorial, where I'll walk you step by step through the games and explain as I go. If you'd like to skip the tutorial, you can do so by pressing escape or going to the top right corner and clicking on this cog wheel, then going to the bottom left where it says account. Click on account, and it will then bring you to the option to skip the tutorial. I do recommend playing through the tutorial, even if you've played Magic the Gathering before, as it helps make sure that you know the mechanics and gets you used to the digital interface. You can also go back to the tutorial at any time by clicking on the question mark on the home tab and then playing replay tutorial. This is great if you've skipped the tutorial or if you just need a refresher on the mechanics. Let's begin the first game of the tutorial. You're going to be introduced to Sparky. Sparky is going to be your guide through the tutorial and she's going to help explain things or kind of nudge you in the right direction if you're having trouble while playing through these different games. Our first opponent is Kylia the Elf. She's going to be playing a green deck and we're going to be playing this white deck. When you first start, you're going to want to click and drag a plains to the battlefield. This is a land. You can tap your land to generate mana. In this case, a plains creates white mana. We're going to now play another plains because it is our turn again. Using our two plains, we're going to generate two mana to play the Shrine Keeper. You can do that by just clicking and dragging the Shrine Keeper, and it will automatically tap the two lands for mana. Now that we have our creature on the battlefield, Let's take a look. It is a two power, two toughness creature. We couldn't attack with it last turn because it had summoning sickness, just as this one will have here. Play a land and then play your Shrine Keeper. This Shrine Keeper that we summoned last turn is able to attack. So we're going to click on it to declare it as an attacker and then in the bottom right, confirm that we want it to attack. It has two power, so as it attacks in, it will deal two damage. If it receives two damage, it will die because it has two toughness. So far, our opponent hasn't played a creature, so here they're going to play their first. It's the Treetop Warden. Like our creatures, this also has two power and two toughness. Just as you can have attackers, you can also have blockers. So because our creature tapped last turn, it untapped at the start of this turn. Our creature tapped because it attacked. When you start this turn, play your Locks It On Line Breaker by playing it from the hand. Then, click both Shrine Keepers to make them attack. Kylia here is blocking. When a creature attacks and blocks, they each deal their power to each other, dealing damage towards the toughness. This means that both of these creatures will die in combat. Pity I have to crush you. We still have two very nice creatures on the board, but they're not as big as the Rumbling Baloth. This has summoning sickness, so it couldn't attack the last turn, but we do not want to attack into the Rumbling Baloth. It has four power and four toughness. We cannot deal four power with either of our creatures. So you can play your land for the turn and then press no attacks in the bottom right. You've shown spirit. Now I'm going to bring attention to our life total. We currently have seven life and our opponent has four. The goal here is to reduce our opponent's life total to zero. If our life total is reduced to zero, we will lose the game. What we're going to have to do here to survive the eight power, because they use Feral Roar here, is to click on one of our creatures and use it to block the Rumbling Baloth. You can confirm the blocker in the bottom right. And now you still have the Loxon on Line Breaker on the battlefield. We only dealt two damage to that, which was not as much as its eight toughness, so it didn't die that turn, and it heals back up at the end of the turn. It's now tapped because it did attack. So we're going to cast this spell we drew called Take Vengeance to destroy the Rumbling Baloth. Now, use your Loxodon on Line Breaker to attack the opponent. 
They've played two more creatures, but we just drew the perfect spell. Blinding Radiance. This taps, turning sideways, both of our opponent's creatures because they have a toughness of two or less, allowing us to attack through and win the game. And that is the first game in the tutorial. After each game, you're going to unlock a few more cards which get added to your deck. You'll be playing with them in the next match. When you're ready, you can click play to start the second game in the tutorial. Your next opponent is Mirbo the Goblin. Our opponent's deck is going to be playing lots of small creatures, which will be hard for us to contend with. We're going to be doing a lot of blocking at the start of this game. Mirbo leads the game by playing Raging Goblin, which has an ability called Haste. This means that it can attack the turn that it's played. On your turn, play a Plains. You don't have any spells you can cast, so it's going to go back to Mirbo's turn. Mirbo is going to play two more goblins. All three of these can attack, but they only have one power and one toughness. So each one is only dealing one damage. On your turn, play another planes, and then drag a Shrine Keeper to the battlefield to tap your two planes and cast it. You now have a two power and two toughness creature. Click it to declare it as a blocker, and use it to block any of the three goblins. All three of these goblins are identical, so it doesn't matter which one you block. Oh, and it looks like Murbo has now played a three power and three toughness creature. This received one damage, but it's going to heal up at the end of the turn. On your turn, play a planes, then cast the Shrine Keeper, and cast the Sanctuary Cat by dragging them to the battlefield. Do not attack this turn because you have a 2 power 2 toughness creature and they have a 3 power 3 toughness creature that would be able to block, so click no attacks. You have a lot of different options here on how to block. The simplest way to do it is to use your Shrine Keeper and your Sanctuary Cat to each block the Raging Goblins, and let the Goblin Bruiser continue through. There are other ways that you can block here, including doing what's called Double Block, where you use two creatures, both to block the Goblin Bruiser. But part of this battle is that whatever Goblin goes unblocked gets sacrificed. And deals 5 damage to you, the player. On your turn, play a Plains, and then attack with all three of your creatures. You've now done enough damage to bring Murbo down to 8 life. You only have 6 life left though, so you have to be sure that you don't die. And here's where a lot of damage comes onto play. The Goblin Gang Leader has been played. This is a 2-2, two -two, and these are 1-1s. One -ones. So you don't want to attack with the Sanctuary Cat because it would be blocked by the Goblin Gang Leader. Play your planes for the turn and then cast the card you drew, Spiritual Guardian. This is the card that was added to your deck. It's a 3 power, 4 toughness creature, very good at blocking, and it gains you 4 life. Attack with both Shrine Keepers. And they are double blocking one of them, and blocking the other one, meaning all of those creatures died. But you still have two creatures left on the battlefield. The Ogre Painbringer is very big. This is a 7 power, 3 toughness creature, and it deals 3 damage to each player when it enters the battlefield. This is going to damage both of us. Now even though this has a really high power, you can still block it. Play your Spiritual Guardian for the turn. This has 3 power and 4 toughness. This has 1 power, 2 toughness, and either of them can be used to block. Your goal right now is to win before the opponent does. So you can attack with the Spiritual Guardian. And then block with either of your creatures. It doesn't matter which. I'm going to block with the Sanctuary Cat. 
If you want to kill the pain bringer, you can block with the spiritual guardian. Either way, you'll be left with enough damage to win the game. You can take vengeance, but you don't need to here. The big thing you need to do on this turn is use both of your creatures to attack, or just one, and deal the final blow to Mirbo. You've completed the second game in the tutorial. When you're ready to continue, click the play button to move into the third game. Your third opponent is going to be playing a blue deck. This is Kalubi the Merfolk. Kalubi is full of wisdom, some of which is very real and some of which is very silly. What Kalubi will be playing is a new type of creature called a creature with flying. These creatures cannot be blocked except by other creatures with flying or by creatures with an ability called reach. On your turn, play a plains and then play your sanctuary cat. Kalubi is going to use an aura. Auras enchant creatures and either give them stats or can give negative abilities as well. In this case, the river's favor is going to give an additional power and toughness to the Zephyr Gull, which means that it's going to deal more damage to you each time it attacks or be a stronger blocker. You cannot block it because it has flying and your sanctuary cat does not. Now you're going to use your first aura. Play a plans for turn and now use Knight's Pledge on your Sanctuary Cat. Your Sanctuary Cat now has three power and four toughness. This is a permanent effect. As long as the aura is in play, it is giving this creature the additional stats. Kalubi has now played a zero power, meaning it can't deal any damage, and four toughness creature. Unfortunately, because you only have three power, you're not going to be able to break through this crab. You can attack, but first, play your Loxodon Linebreaker. If you do attack, and you do not need to on this turn, it will just be blocked. And the Short Chrome or Crab will absorb all of the damage. Once again, the Zephyr Gull is swinging at you, and your life total is ticking down by two every turn. Now Kalubi's going to follow up with a negative aura. This is Water Knot. The creature enchanted by Water Knot is tapped, meaning that it won't be able to attack, and it does not untap on your turn. Play your land for the turn, and then use another Knight's Pledge on your Sanctuary Cat. Your Sanctuary Cat now has five power, meaning that it's bigger than a Shorecomer Crab. When they block with the crab, it's going to die, and they no longer have a blocker. You take another two damage, but you have a very large creature on this board, this cat. And Kalubi is going to play a Divination. This is a sorcery spell that allows you to draw two cards. They drew a Shorecomer Crab, playing it so they can block. On your turn, play a Plains, and then the Spiritual Guardian. You'll gain four life, and then attack with the Sanctuary Cat. Once again, it gets blocked by a Shorecomer Crab, but now you have two creatures able to attack next turn. But they've played the Titanic Pelagiosaur. The Titanic Pelagiosaur is very big and it has six toughness. You've drawn Angelic Reward. I recommend casting it and enchanting the Spiritual Guardian here. This will give three power, three toughness, and flying. You can also use it on the Sanctuary Cat. It does not actually matter, as long as you attack with which whatever creature you've enchanted. So you deal six damage to them, and you might notice they only have six life left. Use your Sanctuary Cat to block the Titanic Pelagisaur. And unless they have a way to deal with the Spiritual Guardian, you'll be winning just by attacking in the air. 
and that's exactly what's going to happen. You do not need to use this knight's pledge. All you need to do is attack with the spiritual guardian, but I think it's more fun to attack and deal more damage. So I've enchanted the sanctuary cat with knight's pledge, and now I'm attacking with both the spiritual guardian and the sanctuary cat, dealing a little bit of extra damage. And now you've won the third game in the tutorial. When you're ready to face the fourth battle, click play in the bottom right. This next opponent will be playing a black deck. This deck involves creatures that can be cast at instant speed, which means that they can even be cast in your turn. Sparky's giving you a warning right here that this opponent has spells that can be cast on your turn. On your turn, play a plans and then your sanctuary cat. Go on, attack. And we're being goaded into attacks. First, play your plans and then your shrine keeper. Once you've cast your shrine keeper, you'll go to attacks and you can attack in with the sanctuary cat. Your opponent is going to destroy it using an instant speed spell called cruel cut. Cruel Cut is going to destroy your cat before it deals damage, even though it's already attacking. You still have this Shrine Keeper with Summoning Sickness on the battlefield. Your move. Once again, on your turn, play a Plans, and then your Shrine Keeper. Using the Shrine Keeper you played last turn, attack. Your opponent is playing a creature with Flash. This is the Nimble Pilferer. It has two power and one toughness. If it blocks your Shrine Keeper, and it will, then they will both die in combat. Now that you have one creature left on the battlefield, it seems like you've got a pretty good board advantage. Play a planes for a turn, and then use your Knight's Pledge Aura on your Shrine Keeper to get a 4 power, 4 toughness creature. The Dragon Hand Shadow is going to play out not one, but two spells. First, casting the Nimble Pilferer and using it to block your Shrine Keeper. Then the Nimble Pilferer was sacrificed to Altar's Reap, which allows them to draw two cards. Because your Shrine Keeper was blocked, they don't receive any damage, but they still do get to draw two cards. Now they've played the Soul Hunter Rakshasa. This card is bigger than yours, but it can't block. Right now is a good time to pay attention to your life total. You only have five life left because this dealt five damage to you when it entered the battlefield. Do not attack this turn, but do play your land for the turn. Click your Shrine Keeper and use it to block the Rakshasa. Lock it in as a blocker in the bottom right, and then cast Tactical Advantage. You can only cast this spell once you're being attacked and you've used your creature to block. You can also use this on the offense on a blocked creature. So now we're going to go to combat with our 4-4 four, four Shrine Keeper. Attack in. They're going to cast two spells, and this can be used on a creature that is being blocked. So they're going to try to trade their two Nimble Pilfers for your Shrine Keeper using a double block. Use your Tactical Advantage on your Shrine Keeper. This will give it an additional 2 power and 2 toughness until end of turn, which means that it will survive their block. You now still have your extra large Shrine Keeper on the battlefield. Now attack in. As far as you can tell, it's safe to attack. But the Dragon Hand Shadow has three cards in hand, and those three cards are going to be three Nimble Pilferers. If all three of these were to attack you, then you would die in combat. But you drew a spell called Confront the Assault. 
now that your opponent is attacking you, cast Confront the Assault. This will create three spirit tokens. If you block just one creature, that's fine. You will only take four damage and you won't be dead. But just to be safe, you can block all three. Ugh, why won't you die? Because next, you'll be drawing the Angelic Reward, which you can use to enchant your Shrine Keeper and then attack for seven damage. You've now won the fourth game in the arena tutorial. When you're ready to start the last battle, click play in the bottom right. Your final battle takes a little bit longer than the previous ones, so be prepared to take a few minutes for this one. You're going to be playing against Nickel Bolas. Nickel Bolas will be playing multiple colors worth of cards and abilities you have not yet seen. On Nicol Bolas' first turn, he'll just be playing a land. On your turn, you'll also just be playing a land. On the second turn, there's going to be a Miasmic Mummy coming into play. This mummy makes both players discard a card. Click on a Planes from your hand to discard it. On your second turn, play another Planes and then cast Shrine Keeper. Nicol Bolas is going to use Cruel Cut to destroy your Shrine Keeper, then attack you with the Miasmic Mummy. This means you're going to be taking two damage, but that's not the end of the world. On your turn, play your third land, and then cast Loxodon Linebreaker. Nicol Bolas is going to draw three cards and lose three life using a spell called Ambition's Cost. On your turn, play your planes, and then attack with the Loxodon Linebreaker. You have tactical advantage in hand, so when they block with the Miasmic Mummy, give it plus two, plus two, so it survives combat. Now, Nicol Bolas is going to make use of the card that he discarded on the Miasmic Mummy, which was Volcanic Dragon. Volcanic Dragon comes into play from the graveyard and can attack you for four damage because it has flying and haste, meaning you're not able to block with the Loxodon Linebreaker. On your turn, play a Plains and then Spiritual Guardian. Then attack with your Loxodon Linebreaker. You've gained 4 life, meaning that you at least have a good amount of life, but you're not going to have any creatures by the end of this turn, because Nicol Bolas is using Double Cast to double the next spell cast, which is Seismic Rupture. This means that you're going to be having 2 damage dealt to both of your creatures, and then 2 damage dealt again. That's going to kill both of your creatures. On your turn, play a Plains, and then the Inspiring Commander. This is a new card in your deck. The Inspiring Commander is a 1 power, 4 toughness creature for 6 mana, which doesn't seem very strong, but whenever another creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, you'll be gaining a life and drawing a card. Nicol Bolas has also been drawing cards by casting Overflowing Insight. On your turn, play the Shrine Keeper. This draws you another Shrine Keeper. And this draws you Take Vengeance. This allows you to kill the Volcanic Dragon. And then attack for one damage with the Inspiring Commander. But these Shrine Keepers you played are not going to be long for this battlefield because Nicol Bolas has cast Chaos Maw, which is going to deal three damage to each other creature. On your turn, just pass through, don't attack, and wait for this Chaos Maw. And Volcanic Dragon to attack you. When they attack you, cast Confront the Assault. This will make three creatures for you, and also gain you three life and draw you three cards. My recommendation for how to deal with this is to block, 
the volcanic dragon with all three of your spirits. Let the Chaos Maw hit you. Then use tactical advantage on any of your three spirits to give it two power and two toughness. You don't actually have to block with all three of these, I just think that it's more fun. You only need to block with two if you're giving one of them the tactical advantage. Now, play a plans, play your Sanctuary Cat, and attack with both of your creatures. You can also cast, either before or after combat, the Sarah Angel that you've drawn. Sarah Angel does not draw you a card because it has more than two power. Now, Sarah Angel has a new ability called Vigilance. Vigilant creatures do not need to tap in order to attack. The Inspiring Commander is being killed by Cruel Cut, and now Nicol Bolas is playing Ancient Crab and Renegade Demon. These are some very large creatures. Block with just your Sanctuary Cat. And now use Angelic Reward on your Sarah Angel. This is going to make a 7-7 seven, seven flyer. Attack just with the Sarah Angel. My patience is wearing thin. Let's finish it. Nicol Bolas is attacking you with a lot of power. So block at least two of the creatures. It doesn't matter which ones you block with each. You can even do this. Taking out their larger creature. And now finish the game by attacking with your Sarah Angel. Congratulations, you've won against Nicol Bolas and defeated the Magic Arena tutorial. The next step after the tutorial is going to be the color challenge, which is a good way to unlock new decks for you to play and give you a bit of a starting hand when you're playing in the queue. I recommend that you play through that before you start playing ranked or the other game modes. If you'd like to skip those, Similar to skipping the tutorial, you can click in the top right corner and go to accounts and s unlock all play modes. You can always return to the color challenge by clicking on the question mark on the main menu stream. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you get through the tutorial for Arena. Welcome to the game!